hello students so in today's lecture i'm going to talk about one parasite known as fasciola hepatica so the common name for this parasite it is known as uh, ship liver fluke it is a fluke okay so it is known as the common name is ship liver fluke so this fasciola hepatica it was the first trematode that was discovered more than 600 years ago in 1379 by Jehan Degree. So the scientists that discovered this uh, trematode, it comes under trematode. Okay. It was uh, Jehan Degree in 1379. So it was named by another scientist that is Linnaeus in 1758. And this parasite, Fasciola hepatica, is the largest and most common liver fluid found in humans. But its primary, its uh, primary host is the sheep, and to a less extent, the cattle. So it is worldwide in distribution, being found mainly in sheep rearing areas. Right? Since the primary host is the sheep, so it will be mostly found in this areas so it causes the economically important disease known as liver rot in the sheep in sheep then the habitat of this parasite it resides in the liver and biliary passage of the definitive host so the morphology of this Parasite, we have adult worm and the egg. These are the two morphologies. So, in adult worm, it will appear as a large leaf shaped fleshy flake. If you see the diagram, right, it appears, it looks like a large leaf shaped fleshy flake, 30 millimeter long and 15 millimeter broad, whereas the color it can be of gray or brown in color then it has a conical projection anteriorly containing an oral sucker and is rounded posteriorly okay then the adult worm lives in the biliary tract of the definitive host for many many years it can take till around five years in sheep and 10 years in humans so like other trematodes this parasite is also hermaphrodite so that is for the adult worm and then we have the egg another morphology is the egg okay so the eggs are large ovoid operculated bile stained and about 140 micrometer by 80 micrometer in size so these eggs contain an immature larva which is known as the miracidium okay then the eggs this eggs do not float in saturated salt solution or saturated solution of common salt when we perform the diagnosis part okay they do not float then the eggs of this fasciola hepatica and fasciolopsis busci cannot be differentiated if we compare these two okay we have other species on the fasciola that is busky so if we compare it cannot be differentiated the eggs of these two then the eggs are unembryonated when they are freshly passed in the stool okay so that is the morphology then we have the life cycle of this parasite this fasciola hepatica passes its life cycle in in one definitive host and two intermediate hosts so overall if we combine we have three hosts because some parasite required requires only one host some two hosts but this parasite fasciola hepatica they requires three hosts one is definitive host and two intermediate hosts so the definitive host out here can be the sheep goat cattle and man Whereas intermediate host, we have snails of genus Limni and Succini. Okay, then encysment occurs on aquatic plants 
which acts as the second intermediate host. Then the mode of infection of this parasite out here, the definitive host, either sheep and man, get infection by ingestion of the metacursory insisted on aquatic vegetation. So after the ingestion here, the adult worm lives in the biliary passage of sheep or man. Then eggs are laid in the biliary passage and are shed in feces. So the embryo measures in water in about 10 days and the neurasidium escapes. So it penetrates the tissues of first intermediate host uh, like snails of the genus Limni. Okay. Then in snail, this neurasidium progresses through the sporosis and the first and second generation radial stages to become the surcery circary in about one to two months. So the circary escape into the water and ensis on aquatic vegetation on blades of grass to become metacircary which can survive for a longer period. Then the sheep, cattle or human eating watercress or any other water vegetation containing the metacircaria circaria become infected. The metacircaria exists in the duodenum of the definitive host and pierces the gut wall, uh, gut wall to enter the peritoneal cavity. After that, they will penetrate the glissons capsule, transverse the liver parenchyma and reach the biliary passage where they mature into the adult worms in about uh, three to four months okay so that's all about the life cycle of the um, fasula hepatica you need to remember the host the host out here is very important okay i repeat again we have the definitive host or the first intermediate host out here we have is the snail and the second intermediate host we have is the water plant. So the definitive host will be sheep, goat, cattle or man. Okay. So these are the three hosts under Fasula Hepatica life cycle. Then coming up next we have is the uh, pathogenesis. So this, the infection caused by this parasite is known as Fasuliasis. So this fasciliasis differs from chronorchiasis in that fasula hepatica is larger and so causes more mechanical damage in transversing the liver tissue. It causes parenchymal injury as humans are not its primary host. It causes more severe inflammation or severe inflammatory response. So some larvae penetrate right through the liver and diaphragm ending up in the lungs. Then in case of acute phase, what happened here in acute phase during the migration of the larva, patients present with fever, right upper quadrant pain, the sinophilia and tender hepatomegaly. So the symptoms subside as the parasites reach their final destination in case of the acute phase so we also have the chronic phase out here patients may develop biliary obstruction biliary cirrhosis obstructive jundice then <coughs> anemia also but there is no association to hepatic malignancy in case of this fasciolysis then occasionally or sometimes the ingestion of raw liver of infected sheep results in a condition known as halzon, which means suffocation. Okay, then the adult worms in the liver will attach to the pharyng pharyngeal mucosa, causing edematous congestion of the pharynx and surrounding areas, leading to dyspnea, acute dysphagia, deafness, and rarely asphyxiation. Then, however, this condition is more often due to 
pentastone uh, penta larva. So, this halzone is particularly common in Lebanon and other parts of the Middle East and North Africa. So, that's all about the pathogenesis, pathogenesis of Fasula hepatica. The next we have is the uh, lab diagnosis. In the lab diagnosis, we can perform different methods to detect this parasite. We can carry uh, our detection or diagnosis with the help of a microscope. We can perform stool microscopy, then blood picture and serodiagnosis as well as imaging. So, <coughs> in stool microscopy, out here the monstration of eggs in feces or aspirated bile from duodenum is the best method of diagnosis. Then eggs of uh, this Fasula hepatica and Fasula bosci are indistinguishable like I have mentioned earlier, right? Then in case of blood picture you will see eosinophilia. Then if we perform serodiagnosis we can perform by different methods that includes immunofluorescence, ELISA, immunoelectrophoresis and complement fixation. These are these all are helpful in likely infected individuals for detection of a specific antibody. Okay. Then ELISA becomes positive within two weeks of infection and is negative after treatment. Then in case of chronic fasciolasis, Fasula coproantigen may be detected in stool sample. <coughs> so that is for the case of serodiagnosis or if we perform serological tests. Then next method we have is the imaging. Out here you can do USG, CT scan, then endoscopic retrograde um, uh, pancreatography or we call it in short ERCP then uh, percutaneous coangiography may be helpful in the diagnosis of this parasite then the treatment what are the treatment we can opt for this parasite oral triclabendazole uh, around 10 mg per kg once is the treatment of choice then the, we also have alternative drug that is bithionol. We can give around 30 to 50 mg for around 10 to 15 days. Then another one we have is the uh, prednisolone at a dose of 10 to 20 mg per kg to control toxemia. Okay, so these are the few drugs mentioned here. Then what are the prophylaxis? or the prevention should be taken for this parasite. So, fasciolasis can be prevented by health education, which is very basic, right? Then preventing pollution of water courses with sheep, cattle and human feces. Then also prevention of prof prophylaxis can be done by proper disinfection of watercresses and other water vegetations before consumption or before eating all these raw materials. So that's all about uh, Fasula hepatica. Thank you.